Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you give to us. We thank you especially for your forgiveness when we don't deserve it for using sinful people to accomplish your amazing goals. Be with us as we study your word to help us to recognize our sin, but all the more recognize the tremendous gift of your love and, and your presence with us and your grace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, it was kind of ironic. I have to share this with you. Um, I was having a conversation with Jason this morning, and um, he said that he'd been reading his Bible, and, and that uh, he got actually to this story about Jacob and Esau. And he said, and I'm reading this, and, and he says, he says, All right, I, I had to stop because there was a problem. God seems to encourage scoundrels. <laughs> he said, so I started getting these thoughts about, well, gee, maybe I should, you know. <laughs> like, no, that's not right. I better stop because <laughs> I'm, I'm going the wrong way with this. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh-huh. so, uh, so we should look at this and see, you know, does God encourage scoundrels, or you know, or, or is this something else entirely? And the other thing is, when you read that story, and you say, "Well, God's not fair," because right. Saul should have been. Well, it's his fault. Never mind. All right. Well, <laughs> let's take a look at it. So, Genesis chapter twenty-five, verses nineteen to thirty-four. This is the account of Abraham's son Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean from Pandan, Aram, and sister of Laban, and the Aramean. It gets easier after this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife, Rebecca, became pregnant. The babies, Joel's led each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other. The older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up, and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was a quiet man staying among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for the wild game, loved Esau. But Rebecca loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. He said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of the at red stew. I'm famished. Mm-hmm. That is why he was called also called Edom. <laughs> Jacob replied, First sell me your birthright. Look, I am about to die, Esau said, What good is the birthright to me? <clears throat> but Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he wrote, he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jake, Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. It just occurred to me what happened. <clears throat> Esau was born prematurely. They were not um, identical twins. They were paternal twins. And Isaac was, I mean, um, Jacob was conceived first. And then then Esau 
was conceived after that, because that can happen. And that's why Jacob was in truth the elder. That's my scientific answer. But premature babies are very hairy. They have a lot of hair on their body. And are they, are they, they tend to be red? Uh, well, I mean, all babies kind of red. All babies, yes. Yeah. But, yes. Oh, no, they're... not black, black babies aren't red. Well, they're, they're like red and then white and then... then black they kind of change color. They change color. Okay. <laughs> They'll okay. tell you they're a bit about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. that... He'd offer a unique respect <laughs> on that. But that just occurred to me when... I've read, I mean, I've read before that he was hairy, but... Well, that's really interesting. Yeah, I, I never thought of that. I've never heard anybody talk... But anyway, that occurred to me. Wow, well... Okay, so tying in, and, and that's that's brilliant. I really appreciate that. Cause but I, in, it will, in reality, it wouldn't matter, because God is sovereign. Well, he will decide what he's going to do. Well, right, right, right. Uh, yeah. But if maybe Jacob truly would have been the firstborn, but it just... Yeah, just, yeah it just, was a matter of who came out first, and right. maybe being the preemie, Esau would come out first. He, he would come through the birth canal. More easily, he might have. I don't know if he, he was, was closer to the bit. Yeah. Well, and I don't know if he was smaller. Um, but they anyway. didn't have eight pounds six ounces like they do now. <laughs> yeah. well, but tied in with this, um, another piece of science, and I may have mentioned this before because it's had such an impact on my life. Um, it this was a special that I saw on like the Learning Channel or something like that on um, multiples in the womb. And, um, you know, nowadays with the 40 um, ultrasounds that they have where you can actually watch them mm-hmm. moving around and stuff in the womb, um, they, they did that with where you had, like, twins, triplets, quadruplets and that, and they'd watch these unborn babies at movements. And they found that babies where, where you have more than one in the womb will actually fight with each other. No. Like, hmm. like not just like sort of bump, you know, randomly into each other, but they watch and there was actually a pattern of aggression. Hmm. Which I wasn't surprised at all. The Bible says we're sinners from the moment of conception, right? So there you go. Oh, these innocent little babies. No, they're not. Even in the womb, they're not. And we I'm see like jockeying for the best position. Well, they like they they found that I'm going to be first. No, I want to be first. No, I want to be first. They, they they said that um that they would have. Um, where where one would tend to be the more aggressive and the other one would be more passive. Um, even so, to the point where if the if the more aggressive one would start to kind of beat on the other one, that one would retreat and sort of cuddle up to the placenta, <laughs> like "Mom, help me." <laughs> but you know what? They are human beings, so it's. But we shouldn't be surprised. Right. Although I know some people are <laughs> surprised. And I never knew that either. But isn't that, that interesting? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. They say you learn something new every day. Yeah, yeah and, and they even found that after the kids were born, as they grew up, whoever was the most aggressive one in the womb would continue to be the dominant one as as they grew up. They even found in one case where the... um where there was a pair of um, fraternal twins. So they were in separate amniotic sacs. And so they had this sort of membrane between them that when um, when the, the one would get aggressive, the other one would go and hide behind a curtain. <laughs> and they went, wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what else could you say? Like, wow, that's a habit they developed early on you know? but you know what this really um people point to um to the uh you know different passages in, in scripture to say um that you know well the bible says that you're um that you're, you're the birth begin or life begins at conception and you know and all that kind of stuff and and what I've always pointed to is the best biblical passage on that is Psalm 51, where it actually says, Sin did my mother conceive me, right? Why do we need to take care of babies? Because they're sinners from conception. 
these are people that Jesus died for because Jesus died for sinners. And and that's not a popular way of, of sort of promoting this because you're not going to see people carrying around signs with with, with pictures of, of unborn babies saying, save, save the sinners, you know? <laughs> it's, it's just our society's not going to go along with that. But there's scientific evidence for original sin. <laughs> yeah. wow. So I just... It just floored me, and it just had such a huge impact. And, and one of these days, I'm gonna find that video and you know buy a DVD or whatever to to be able to use it in class and stuff because it is just it was just wow. That was a kind of, yeah. and it, 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 was, it was one of those things that where you go, okay, this shouldn't surprise me because this confirms everything that I've always believed. At the same time. You just, to have the evidence be that obvious. <laughs> you say, thank you, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, I don't know about thanking God for, you know, sinful behavior. Well, for letting you know. But for giving us that insight, yeah, mm -hmm. and to help us see that what, what God told us, you know, that was, David wrote that 3,000 years ago, mm -hmm. right? Um, Moses wrote Genesis, where this, this story, I mean, he wrote this, 3,400 years ago. And, and you know, and here we, again, yeah, it wasn't just that they were, you know, wiggly. They were really fighting in the womb. Well, and I've always felt that when Esau came in and was so hungry, I really felt he had a low blood sugar. I'm not making a joke, because when, when I have a low blood sugar like that, mm -hmm. you better feed me immediately. I can't even think straight. I'd sell my birthright, too, just to get something to... Well, I'd want a glass of apple juice, but... And, and I... When every time I read that, I think about how I am, and I think, I can see that. I can truly see how that would be. be. Before I was diabetic, when I was younger, and I'd read that, and I'd think, gee, what a jerk. But now I understand why that could be possible. Doesn't mean that's what that means. But I can see how it could happen. Yeah, you know, it's it's amazing when you look at this stuff, and and it, 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 I always find it interesting when when we see stuff in the Bible, and it just seems like a sort of a quirky story, and then they'll have some sort of scientific breakthrough, and you go, oh wow, oh look, oh, you know? <laughs> and and again, we shouldn't be surprised. No, we should begin to learn to say, if God said that, then that's what that means. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you, you just, I don't know, maybe it's just the fact that, that we don't expect people to, to have the sort of, of, of course, they didn't understand the science, you know, back then. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was what it was. And, and, um, but, you know, to, to see it now. And, and, but what it does is it confirms um, all the more the historicity of these stories. Um, because what we see here is where so often they'll say, well, that's not possible or that doesn't make any sense or, or whatever. And then, you know, whether it's archaeology or, or, or some other scientific um, discovery, that all of a sudden what everybody thought was impossible or didn't make any sense, all of a sudden it makes perfect sense. And, and oh, oh, that's what we didn't understand, you know, all along. And, and so it's always interesting to see those sort of breakthroughs. And, and, and what I think what, what I find most, and I think the word is amusing, is the fact that every time they have one of these breakthroughs, it just further confirms the truth of the Bible. You know, you, you never have where something comes along and, and, and they go, Oh, well, that throws a cog in the whole thing, you know. <laughs> it just, and, and when, and every once in a while there, there will be something like that, but then they dig a little further and they go, oh, nope, never mind. <laughs> of course, the, the first part, they go, oh, see, the Bible's wrong. That's front page news. And then when they dig a little more and they find out, oh, we were misinterpreting the evidence, <laughs> that's lost. page 17, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. So, it's frustrating, but, you know, what do you expect? All right. So, did you ever get the feeling that you or a sibling were a parent's favorite? Yep. Yeah? 
I was, I think I was, I, I had two, an older brother, a younger brother, that were five years apart, and uh, one, one, one was born in March, April, and May, you know, two, two, three different months. And uh, even my brothers have made a comment that mom seemed to show a little more partiality to to me than I was the middle one. Okay? Yeah. But dad used to play me for everything. <laughs> and uh, when I got in a fight with my older brother, my younger brother it was my fault. Huh? I mean, you know, no matter no matter what how it happened, yeah, I was the one that caused the problem. Yeah. And I was the one that got punished. Huh. So you you're sort of like Jacob that um that mom liked you but dad didn't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right, anybody else? <clears throat> I expect that my mother probably was more attached to my youngest brother. That's just kind of how things are, you know. Um, Not that she loved him more, but she he was the last one, her baby. It was nothing that was ever um, jealousy provoking at all. I my uh, my dad was big into hunting and fishing. Um, and so was my brother. Um, me, not so much. I didn't have the patience for fishing um, because my dad fished after like muskies and stuff that where you could fish all day long and not have a single bite. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't have the patience for that. And I couldn't shoot to save my life. And um, so it was just not something that I enjoyed doing. And so, but my brother did. And, and so I always kind of felt a little bit and it, I mean dad loved us both and, and he always looked for things to do with me that um that he you know that would not involve my brother and, you know but he had to work harder to find things mm-hmm. to do with me um mm-hmm. than with my brother it was just an intro and I, I I could always kind of tell that, that that bothered him that he wished I was more of a, a um, sportsman um but it, you know it, it didn't. It didn't change how he felt about me. It was just, you know, sort of uh, a hobby, just sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, did, did you, being it, you were talk, mentioning about hunting? Mm-hmm. Did you have any problems with shooting animals? I mean, did you did you feel sorry for the animals also? Um, because that's a lot of a lot of people that that don't enjoy hunting is because they they just don't feel comfortable killing an animal. You know. <clears throat> I, I probably would more now than I than then. Um, I really, we, I mean, uh, I would go uh, deer hunting, mm-hmm. and I really like venison. So, <laughs> uh, okay, you answered my question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. you can't get into the freezer by itself. No, no, no. <laughs> You're gonna need I, a little help. See, I, I've always been. <laughs> sort of practical when it comes to that I've, I've always understood that uh i mean as far back as i can remember that you know those animals were provided by god to provide us meat and so um you know i'm very always very much against sort of poaching and, and things right. like that um and that i i mean i remember when i was a kid making painting posters against poaching and all kinds of stuff like that um and but but if you're doing it for food fine you know, no problem, and, and uh, so Larry's like that. He's he loves animals. If he finds a bird that's hurt or something, he'll nurse it back, and he would never see an animal be hurt. But if the animal is eating our garden food and he has to shoot it, he will. Mm-hmm. You know, he won't do it. Go out and try. Well, just to do it to do it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I wouldn't but, want to see somebody kill yeah. animals just for the sake of killing. Yeah, them, if he right? has to do it, if you're using it to feed your family or something, yeah. that's a big, big. I remember one time I there was this flock of deer and or whatever herd, I guess, um, and I just sort of shot into the herd to and figured I got to eat something. Um, <laughs> And I, and I I saw one of them kind of jump and run off, and I felt terrible because here I had wounded this thing, mm-hmm. and it was gonna live, 
and so it would probably suffer for the rest of his life. <laughs> it still bothers me to this day. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's long gone, you know, but, mm-hmm. but it's but still But think how it suffered till it died, Pastor. I know. I oh, do. man. <laughs> oh. So, but there was another time... You sleep tonight, now. <laughs> there was another time that I, I mean, you talk about, you know, even though I, I um, wanted to eat him, you know, uh, I still appreciated the animals themselves. I, um, there was one time I fell asleep at the base of the tree of it, and... And I woke up to this sound, and the sound was a herd of deer jumping over me. Oh my god! And, I That's mean, amazing. It, yeah, and I, I was. I mean, I was. I was kind of sitting up, but my legs were, you know, straight out in front of me, and, and I was <laughs> there's these deer like jumping over my legs and and running off, and oh. I was so startled. I would be too. I, I, I kind of went to to grab my gun, and then I just went. Nah, there's no <laughs> way I'm gonna be able to hit one of them. And so I just kind of watched them. <laughs> wow, that was pretty cool. I'm surprised you didn't think it was that wounded deer family coming back to get you. <laughs> I think it was before that. <laughs> but how unusual would that be? Because usually you're right, because they'd mm-hmm. smell they you much less see you before they even, you know, and they'd well, smell you. And, and there's <laughs> another story that my dad likes to tell about how um, I was. we were on opposite sides of a field, and I was sitting in sort of the the crotch of this tree and um and i fell asleep in the tree so we get up at like five o'clock in the morning and oh, yeah. walk out to the and, mm-hmm. and, and for so, a light yeah and, and so and he, he said he sat and watched a deer walk up to me while i was sleeping sniff me and walk away <laughs> You so never knew it. I never knew sniffing it. Sniffing the deer, sniffing the deer, Hunter. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, like, you know, those are awesome, the days though. before people had cameras on their phones, you know? Yeah. Oh, how that awesome. Been that would have been a winner, you know? Oh, <laughs> yeah. That been on America's phone. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Ah. Uh, so, yep. Yeah. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the deer was thankful. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So have you ever made a bad swap with someone? Yes. All right. What, what motivated you to make that swap? I didn't have time to think about it. I mean, I wasn't doing the swapping. The uh-huh. person said, here, we'll flip a coin. And I didn't have a chance to think. And how do I know even where, what the coin was? Maybe it was too, you know what I'm saying, a uh-huh. trick coin. And I lost, and I didn't get the. We didn't get the better bedroom. It was at a beach house. They got the master, and we got the other down the hall. Okay. All right. Maybe I'll make a bad swap. Actually, mm-hmm. not bad. And you're in a beach house. Yeah, How bad can that be? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's sort of, you know, would you like the um, the Cadillac or the, you know, the Lamborghini, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, I, every time I played Monopoly with my brother, I made bad swaps. I was horrible at it. <laughs> he would just bury me. My wife's a little nicer. <laughs> <laughs> She'd probably let you know ahead of time, right? <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, think, I mean, I'm sure I have. It's just oh, now all of a sudden you're getting put on the spot it, and you're yeah. trying to think about it. You know, I don't have any that stand out, but I know I have. I just, everybody does. Something. All right, based on this passage, which of these, Jacob or Esau, would you rather have as a brother? <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. Since I was like Jacob, like you said, you know, Jacob would be the one for me. Huh? Okay, all right. My mom favored me and dad blamed me for. Yeah, that's really tough because, you know, even growing up, I, I was a, it was a middle of three kids. And my brother was the first born, so, you know, he was the first boy. And, you know, and it, my brother will gladly tell you, he was the apple of mom's eye. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, mom was like me best. Yeah, I know, I know. Go ahead and rub it in a little bit, but that's all right. You know, and then came another boy. Well, then, you know, then we had a, our younger sister was the youngest, and she was the first girl, so naturally, daddy's little girl and his princess, so... You're exactly the birth order of Larry. 
a brother, then Larry, and then a girl. And of course, you know, because my brother was older, I could not do the things he could do, so I would get punished because I'm trying to do things I shouldn't be doing because I'm not old enough yet. But I was too old to get away with the same stuff that my sister was doing because she was a baby. <laughs> so no matter what I did was wrong. You know, so you, there you go. You just you pretty much just. I can relate to that. Oh yeah. I was definitely black sheep, you know, and uh, and everybody goes, oh, you always just were different than your brother and sister. I go, gee, go figure. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why, you know. But, I mean, but to my parents' credit, they did. You know, they brought us up in, in the Lutheran church. I mean, we were there every Sunday. You know, they both made sure that all of us kids would go, and they truly. I I believe my heart. You know, they loved us all the same, but you, you, you can't help but being human. You knew there was a little bit of favoritism going on, you know. But, as I said, but yeah, I... You're right. Boy, you had to pick one of these two, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Who, who would you pick? See, I don't know, because the... I, because my brother was older than me and just a little wiser, being more experienced in life, you know, he could always sort of pull things on me. And uh, so, I, you know, I, I go, well, I don't think I'd want another brother like that, you know. I mean, I love my brother, but, um, you know, to to be able to, you know, if, if, if you're constantly being schemed against. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My brother wasn't that bad, you know. But uh, oh, Well, I would choose Esau, except for he continued to have... Um, carry a grudge about that and I don't know Jacob I'm sure took advantage of him though because I think he was sick I think he saw was sick what do you mean by that just, just I think he was diabetic <laughs> oh, and, it, oh. and he had a low blood sugar and he, he did he probably couldn't even think straight because all he needed was, he needed to get something on his stomach well, you think being a man of the great outdoors, he'd eat wild berries or there'd be something with some natural sugars, you know? He may have, but maybe he had a long trek from the last spot that you could eat. Yeah, it could be. Finished up all the berries near the edge of the yeah. you know, property. He had a long trip back. And maybe he something. Oh. I always thought it ironic, and I don't want to get too far ahead of things, but when you think about that, so Jacob basically became the father of the Israelites, and of course Esau was the father of the Edomites, and it just seems so odd that even as brothers then, all their offspring became nations, great nations, that basically, yet Esau and Jacob in their older years, it seemed like they had met and they reconciled as Jacob was coming back, you know, home from Laban and stuff. So I thought, boy, if they patch things up, why when you read later in the Bible that basically the, you know, Israelites were at war with the Edomites and that, you know. And yeah, they kind of sent went their separate ways after that. Yeah, yeah. So I just thought, I found that kind of strange. You know, you're right. You think they're, they're brother clansmen, they're kinsmen. I mean, they're family, but yet, nah. You yeah. Know? yeah, you don't have the sort of intermarrying with the, um, the uh, Edomites and the Israelites. Really? I just found that really unusual, you know. Different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's good to um, <clears throat> uh, Which of these men did God choose? Jacob. Jacob. Mm -hmm. All right. Why? All right. Let's look at Romans 9, 10 to 16. Probably because, like I said, he sovereign. <laughs> <laughs> but boy, and you're thinking, you're right, Jacob, the deceiver, you know, there's God using the deceptive person. Do you do it, God? Uh, it's, it's the villain, Willie. And not only so, but also when Rebecca had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had done nothing, either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of his call. She was told, The elder will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I love, but Esau I hate. What shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. 
For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So it depends not upon man's will or exertion, but upon God's mercy. Ah. And that's the way it is. And it just so happened that I have been reading that two or three days ago. Oh, so you cheated. No, no, I was, I was doing it. I was being good. I, w- I was doing it for another purpose. Ah. So I did remember. Hmm. Unauthorized reading of the Bible. Wow. Who thought that could ever happen? You know? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. And I know this is going over something, but it, again, it kind of makes you wonder. Didn't we, in a, pri- in a, a prior class or something, go over that verse too with Jacob I love, but Esau I hated? Because I always stumble. It's like God doesn't hate me. Right, right. This is a this is a, a Hebrew idiom, right? Um, that it's a, it's to draw a contrast. Okay. Right. It's sort of like when when Jesus says um, that if you want to follow after me, you have to hate your family. Oh, right. well, he doesn't really want us to hate our family, but it's sort of in comparison uh, that, that that Jesus has to be such a high priority. Um, that, you, that in comparison, your love for your family looks like hate, right? And so, so here, and it's not that, that God loves one person more than another, but the the, the sort of love that, that He showed Him, um, and the the sort of long term effect of what He did for Jacob is so evident that what we see in Esau, you go. Man, that's yeah. God, I mean, God knew all along. But but at the same time, it's not like Esau got you know cast out and you all know right. he became a father of a great yeah, nation. He became so. the father of a great nation, and you know, and he was he was still blessed. You know, just not nowhere near to the degree that Jacob was. And um, and so yeah, anytime you see that sort of that sort of Love hates kind of you know that that sort of contrast of of one versus the other. The point of that is to draw a contrast, not literally hate. Yeah, I understand that better now. Yeah, because boy, when you first glance, and if you take that out of context, you know, mm-hmm. we're just thinking, wow. Right. Yeah, that's, well, thank you, Pastor. A lot like some passages that say, "Fear God." And- doesn't necessarily always mean being <laughs> trembling and afraid in the, like a, I guess afraid, but holding in <coughs> respect and reverence, reverence. and awe. And <laughs> right, right. And, but, you know, a, a, an honest and sincere awe beyond just sort <laughs> of, uh, yeah, I, I think sometimes it, it's worthwhile to say fear and not reverence. Um, in the sense that while we're not afraid of God because we know that he loves us, he's still the mighty, powerful, glorious God, you mm-hmm. know? And, and, and sometimes we can, uh, we can get so, well, it's that contrast between what a friend we have in Jesus and holy, holy, holy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? I had one of my seminary professors would say, God is not your buddy. Yeah, that's true. Right? He's your king. He's your God. He's your Lord. Yeah. And, um, you know, at the same time, Jesus is your brother. God is your father, you know. And so it's, it's a, there's, those two things are held in tension with each other. Um, and it's not that, and it's not even that we sort of find a happy medium between the two. It's we have them both at the same time. And, um, but it's important that we not lose either one. It'd be very hard for me, I, I, and I sure it'd be for most people. But it, you know, it almost wouldn't be any different that if at this very moment Jesus walked through this door into this office, that I would first be so inclined to just fall face down at his mm-hmm. feet, you know, and just start sobbing because I feel like such a sinner, you know. Yeah. And it just not all. I just, you know, what I mean, it just it'd be instinctive. So when they say every knee bowing, I believe it because. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, and it's just, wow. Oh, you're, 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 you Um. Oh, okay. So, do we answer? I think we answer the question. Which of these men did we, God choose? Chose Jacob. Why? All right. Because. All right. Because he's sovereign. Because of his grace. All right. And because he's God, and and he chooses to love people, and and he chooses to express that love in different ways toward different people. You know, some people are rich, some people are not. Some people have great, tremendous faith that goes beyond anything that I could ever dream of. Right? And and God has blessed them with that, that faith. And um, <laughs> sometimes I look at their lives and I go, I know why God gave them that faith, because they needed to get through their life. Or maybe it's that they have that faith because of everything they've been through that God has carried them through. You know, I don't know. But, you know, why? And I remember my dad used to ask me that sometimes with everything that he went through. And I looked at his faith and I went, Wow. What kind of a question is that? <laughs> 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 and, um, but it was, and, you know, he was, uh, he was such an inspiration to me and, and all this, you know, even though he's gone, he always will be. Um, and I always, I always looked up to him so much, and, and everybody did. So, why? Because look at how God is using him, and, and he, God used him in ways that that never would have happened if he weren't so sick. That's awesome. But yeah, it's just it's just the incredible way that God works, um, you know. But what it shows. And what I see over and over again is that when God chooses sinners, when God chooses the weak, um, you know, and, and, and that sort of thing, the, the most unlikely people, and accomplishes such great, amazing things through them, what we see is that it's God doing it. That it's not just because this person was good at what they did. And, um, and you just see it happen and you go, that's a God thing. That's not a human thing, because what happened there is beyond any sort of human ability to do that. Things just happened that, you know, that were beyond explanation. You know, that's so amazing. I really, I think it touches a, a real deep part of my life as well, because uh, the person that you guys all see and know is me today. If you just saw me as a young boy growing up in, in junior high, uh, I had no self-confidence. I had no esteem. I felt like I was a nobody and that I'd never be a somebody, you know, because I never could have things just seem to go wrong. You know, I couldn't, couldn't make friends. You know, I always tried hard to please people. So you think that they would like you and they still just would snub you. And, you know, we moved from a poor section of town to a section as my dad could afford to make a better living. He moved into a different neighborhood in a better area and then the kids are like oh, you're from there you know so you went through all that. and at junior high you're very impressionable yeah. and uh, it was just to a point where literally i would be sick to my stomach knowing i had to go to school mm -hmm. i just didn't want to deal with it mm -hmm. and you just felt like the whole world's against your shoulders and you never know when i look back at all that you know that all of that happens for reasons you know and and I just sit back and again, I just, how can you not give all the glory to him? Because as I said, I would never have been able, if you would have told me then that I'd be the kind of person that I am today, no, no not a chance. I mean, not even a little, I, I, you're crazy. I, I can't even do anything. And, you know, it's, it's a real powerful testimony mm -hmm. that, uh, that how he does use just anybody. And believe me, I've had so many different things that I'd, I really shouldn't even be here living talking to you folks with so many things that have happened in my life. But yet, there I am. And as I said, it's when God has a purpose, he's going to see it and follow it through. And 
That's why I am a person that wakes up every day, and it's the first thing on my mind is just to thank him for another day. You know, because and I promise that. You know, it's, it's awesome stuff. Really, it's, it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I just felt very compared to Sugar Daddy. He's brilliant. He's Mr. Confident. He's Mr. Outgoing. He talks to any Tom, Dick, or Harry anywhere. It's like, oh, I wouldn't know he's like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Just, I never thought that. And he's really given you that blessing of faith oh. by taking you through this. Mm-hmm. I wonder. Oh, it's. I was going to say, you know, to have that rock solid, just faith that just. Mm-hmm. And there are some times where, you know, you really get it shaken right down to the base, but. Uh, he he never lets you go. You know, he always keep you in and will deliver you through it. So my good friend of mine always said if he's gonna bring you to it, he'll get you through it. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, I like that. So. It's true. Uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay, so um what was the birthright that Esau gave up? All the land, the goods, the riches. Right. Well, our first point okay. is the yeah, he gave up basically a third of the property, right? Because it was the firstborn always gets the double portion. So if you got if you got four kids, you divide it up into five, and the firstborn gets two, and then each of the others gets one. In this case, there was just the two of them, and so you divide it up into three. The first one gets two, and then the other one gets one. I didn't so, realize that it got anything. I thought the firstborn got it all. Yeah, no, no, no. That's how it worked. Is the birthright was the double portion. <laughs> Okay, but there was more to it than that. We take a look at Hebrews 12, 15 to 17. You there already? Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. See to it that no one failed to obtain the great grace of God, that no root of bitterness spring up and cause trouble, and by it the many become defiled, that no one be immoral, or irreligious like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. Okay. So, more than that, he... he had a root of bitterness and his whole life within, I guess, was troublesome. Is that what? You know, we see, I'm going to um, jump ahead a little bit down uh, to the third last question, which is, uh, or no, I'm sorry, not that one. Um, uh, what was the result? Uh, okay, there's, no, what, what was so important and, and how oh, are these mm-hmm. brothers like the first brothers, right? We see... And um, in Cain, this sort of just bitterness eating at him, all right? And, the, and the, that not only did it lead him to murder, but it just, his whole life, even though God said, you know, um, I'm, you know, I'm going to protect you. And, and, you know, the mark of Cain that, that he marked him, and that was a mark of protection. And, right, and, so no one would kill him. Right, right. And, and a lot of people sort of hear, oh, the mark of Cain, oh, it's, you know. Some evil thing. No, that's that's God saying, "Hey, I've I've, 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 I've I love him and I'm going to protect him." You know, and um, it's a sign of God's grace. And and so here we see this this bitterness in, in Esau and this you know just real um, I don't know, you know sort of hot temper and and you know and stuff and and, and so. And yet, you know, God still looked out for him. God still took care of him. But this thing just ate at him. And, and um, where he... I think what we find the difference between Jacob and Esau is Jacob eventually repents. And he really truly repents. And it's the difference between I'm sorry for what I did versus I'm sorry I got caught. All right. Esau was sorry about the consequences. Oh, can I please have my birthright? You know, that sort of thing. Whereas with Jacob, he realized what a horrible person he'd been and said, I don't want to be that person. Um, and, you know, and that's true repentance says, 
make me a different person. Not just, you know, clean up my mess. And, um, and that's the difference. And, and, you know, that's, that's such a huge thing that we as sinners struggle with. That we dig ourselves in a hole and we say, God, help me out of the hole. But not, why, but, what got you in that hole? But yeah, but it's not, God, <clears throat> make me, and, and, and even, you know, so, or maybe it's, God, make me a different person so I don't dig myself into holes like this. <laughs> right? Which is still worried about the consequence. <laughs> and it's still very different from, God, make me a different person because regardless of what holes I find myself in, I want to be with you. And, and I want to be following you. And if I follow you and I fall into a hole, fine. But it's because I'm following you. Right? Don't let me, you know, whereas if I don't want to be um, going away from you, even if I don't fall, fall into it. But given the choice, I'd rather fall into a hole following you than have a perfect, wonderful life away from you. Mm-hmm. And and that's the difference, and, and and we see that in the lives of Jacob and Esau. Do you think, too, unlike the outcome of Cain and Abel in Genesis, that maybe too again God in His sovereignty knew that that Esau at that point probably had murderous thoughts about killing his brother over all this? That if he were to lay his hands on him, he most certainly would have killed him, which is why, you know. Rebecca sent him away, knowing that if your brother can get his hands on you, you're as good as dead. You know, yeah. And, yeah. and and instead of letting that same thing happen, it happened with Abel. You know, to just <laughs> here, go, just you know, I know you don't want to, but you have to go, or he's going to kill you. And but you know, but the other thing is that God had promised that Jacob would be the the one who received the, the covenant blessing. Right. right. Esau had the legal right to it. And he turned it down. He sold it. Right? Oh, and then Rebecca clenched it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah she it. definitely wasn't exactly being a good mom. Then. <laughs> Remember when we yeah, talked about the, the whole let me you know, water you and your camels and all that kind of yeah. stuff? <laughs> Not so sweet and pure as time went on. <laughs> nah. Nah. Mm-mm. Well, we knew from the beginning that she was... She wanted to go with uh, Isaac because she saw that there was. We think, yeah. Yep. We saw. All right. We yep. Saw. We saw that. You know, she seemed to be impressed by his money and yeah. stuff. Yep. Right. He must have been a fairly good-looking guy, even at forty. Oh, well, she hadn't met him though. Well, that's <laughs> true. She just saw his well, money. Just, yeah. well, that's true. That'd have been the money then, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and her, and then so her dad's brother was her uncle Laban, who she sends Jacob to. Then, too, isn't that how that works? Uh, yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's like wow. Okay, <clears throat> okay. So, um, all right, talk first brothers. Uh, result of this conflict, we actually already talked about the Edomites and the Israelites were in um in conflict with each other. So this conflict continued, right? Stop. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, which of these brothers do you respect more? No, no. Uh, everybody's gonna go to the obvious choice. I'm thinking, wouldn't it? They, you know, you know. If you talk about respect, neither one of them have much. But, other than, but, not, it's well, true. Other than the true. fact that, as you said, Jacob did right. repent. Jacob right. repented. All right. Yeah. So we can look at that. But but just given this story, though. Yeah, like, it's kind of hard to. It's kind of uh, hard to have pick yeah, one poison. You kind of, you know? kind of feel. I, I think that, you know, to me, I look at it and I go, "Well, Jacob was the schemer. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. He was taking advantage of his brother's weakness." And it, it's sort of like it almost reminds me of where you have somebody with a a, a disability and the siblings, you know sort of taking advantage of that and stopping you. You kind of feel bad for the one with the disability. And and it seems to be kind of what's happening here, that whether it was a sort of blood sugar thing or whether it was just (laughs) the fact... Well, it's it's an interesting hypothesis, but, um, you know, or or whether it was just the fact that that he knew that his brother was impulsive. Hmm. You know? Yep. 
Um, he wanted something to eat, and he wanted it now, and he'd do anything just to get yeah get something. To eat. And, and, and you almost you you can almost picture when um when when Jacob's cooking up this stew, you know, and smelling really good. That that he's he's he sees Esau coming in from the field, and he's kind of fanning. The- <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's he's got this goat skin, you know, and he's yeah. just waving it. <laughs> Mm, this smells so good. Oh man, I'm starving to death. You gotta get me some of that. Yeah, give me a birthright. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, I gotta have some. I'm gonna die here. That's so a he, he probably shouldn't have been too surprised when he didn't. When he got deceived about the wife, he was gonna go. <laughs> hey. Goes around, comes around. Hey. Hey. Okay. Which of these brothers do you think our society would respect? Probably. Probably Jacob, because he got stuff. He got over, all right? He got over. Well, he did, but yeah. I mean, Jacob, you know, he's he was sharp and... and he, go-getter. He was a go-getter, yeah. yeah. Ambitious. Yeah. He and sure made sure he got back at his father in law after he didn't get the first wife he really wanted, so yeah. he pretty much walked out a ton of his flocks, you know. Yeah, and, oh. and I mean this guy he was a he was a schemer and you know, you look at this, is this guy'd be like ripe for Wall Street. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. He's boy. He'd be an inside trader, that's for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so, how is this exchange between Jacob and Esau like our relationship with Jesus? That was a strange question. Isn't that a strange mm-hmm. question? All right. I but I always, anytime I read a, a story in the Old Testament, I always say, right, where's Jesus? Yeah. All right. And obviously, he's there in the, the whole covenant, um, you know, with Israel being passed down and, and, and that, um, Jacob being one of his ancestors. Okay. But at the same time, right, Esau gave up his birthright. For Jacob, who didn't deserve it. Jacob was the sinner. And yet, because someone else gave up his birthright, Jacob ended up receiving a blessing. Right? And in fact, he received it because of his sin. Right? Jesus gave up his birthright for us. And he did it by our own sin of murdering the Son of God. Now, you could argue that's a stretch. And I, you know, I, I couldn't, you know, it's, it's not a hill that I'm mean, going to be willing to die on, but um, I just, you know, I thought about this, and I thought, well, you start talking about birthrights, and Jesus being the firstborn son of God. Um, this is, you know, and... Yeah, like you saw, he basically just, he had everything, or at least, you know, had that possibility. Well, Jesus did. Esau had that potential, but... Yeah, 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 and in fact, the, firstborn, the Bible calls him the firstborn of the dead. In front of that, um, and so you know he's he receives the, you know, but he he still receives in a sense the double portion, but we all receive the inheritance too. Um, but yeah, he he gave up his his birthright by that. Um, so what's the difference? What's the difference is you know he knew what he was doing the whole time. It's not that it's not that you know we sort of suckered him into it or something. You know? <laughs> So it was it was his plan all along. Yeah. So there's lots of other differences too, but that's sort of the main one, the big one. All right. Any other questions or comments about this one? Just the one that we kind of I don't remember if we went over or not, but a little further up where it said, "What English idiom do we get from oh, 2526?" Oh. I'm not even sure what that question means, so forgive my mm-hmm. ignorance. All right. He um, uh, verse 26. Uh, um, after this brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob or he deceives. Right? The deceiver, right? We have an expression for deceiving somebody. You're pulling my leg. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, right? uh, yeah. That's where that comes from. You're pulling You're my pulling leg. leg. What are you? What, what's that? <laughs> I Is never that? thought about that. A lot of our idioms, our expressions, come from the Bible. You said apple of my eye. 
Uh, that's a bit of a So. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That is nice. We'll know Sneaky as a snake. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just a little, little piece of trivia there. Yeah. Uh, we'll be set for start. Bible trivia then, right? There yeah. you go. All right. All right. Let's close the prayer. Heavenly Father, we are uh, so often ally ourselves with the devil, the great deceiver, and um, and you still love us, you still forgive us, you still choose us and, and do amazing things through us. And so we pray that you continue to use us uh, according to your will and, and use because we cannot and you can um, use our weakness to show your strength and your love. We pray in Jesus' name.